Hey. Yes, sir. How are you? Okay. No. Hi. Take your time. Okay. How much is it? How much? 69. 69. For you? Yes. 59. Oh, you How's that? Yeah, thank you. Well, here we are again, one more time. I don't need to wonder how many more times we're going to do this because there's no need to count. We'll do it every chance we get, every time we can, and until we can't do it anymore. So welcome. Nice to be here with you. My friend Frank is out of town. So I'm not sure if we're going to go collecting this week or not. I think we need to because I just got an order for a thousand nearite snails that are going into a koi pond up in Catoctin, Maryland, where Camp David is. There's a zoo there owned by some friends of mine called the Catoctin Mountain Zoological Park. If you ever get near Thermont or Frederick in Northwest Maryland, you simply must stop in. This is an Eden. A Garden of Eden, the most beautiful place you can possibly imagine, full of hundreds of animals of all varieties. A wonderful experience, a wonderful place, and a joy to be part of. So do stop in if you're in that part of the country. They have a, a koi pond full of beautiful koi and they want to be able to control the uh, algae. So we're sending them 150 placostomus, a thousand nearite snails, and a small colony of high fin sharks. Hold on, somebody's here. Yeah. So would you put the Paku with the, with, the, um, with the Koi's? Paku with Koi. Yeah, that probably would be okay. The Paku will try to eat whatever they can fit in their mouth, but they're not, they're not going to chase the Koi, I don't believe. Koi's are too big. Now, the Paku will get very big. Um. But then, of course, the koi will, too. Does anybody here have any experience putting paco and koi together? I think it would be fine. Um, you know, it's just one of those things you have to try and find out. How much are the paco stalls? Um, I've got at least one big one. I've got some little ones over here. 
The bigger ones, 40 bucks. I'll do 40 on the biggest one. Yep. Oh, Zimran is present. Lefty 3213A. Hello. Hi, Caleb. Steve Bowman. You're very welcome. Dragon Lair making spawning pops. Good for you. Ran out of wine corks. Hum. What else can you use? Christmas balls. What else? What floats? Well, that was my best idea. Tapere Hippolyta, fish from Argentina. Some of my all time favorites. Guppy Boy, Griffin. Jay's Betta, hi there. Cichlids 23, Danny Can, Jamie Lee, Sage, hi Sage, Lance Jones, Chris Steele from Georgia, Sand Creek Aquatics, Steve Mustang 516, Chris Steele, did I say Chris? I said Guppy Boy. So, to the bottom. Did Caleb Cherry Hat Trick Farm. Welcome. And Griffin is looking at the likes. Let's see, I need to flip over to YouTube so I can get to the likes. And another one. Let's see. Fishing robbers work to father fish. And you can take them off. Let's see. Oh, fishing bobbers. Yes. Fishing bobbers work perfectly. Work to T O O. And you can take them off if you want the mop to sink. That's Dragon Lair. You're right. Perfect. Christmas balls. Poof, a pool noodle. Chris Steele. Pool noodle. Little piece. Styrofoam. Cut up pieces of styrofoam. That certainly works. One thing about music and fish, every language in this world understands both. You ever been in a foreign stream? Wonderful. Shoot, chewy. All subtom proficial. Hey, peppy fish. Hi there. Um, yeah, he has a huge pond. It's about a 25,000 gallon koi pond. Beautiful thing. All right. Fishing Roberts. Why is it so hard to grow plants in a 10 gallon tank with root tabs? And I have Amazon sword and the lighter came with the tank. I use Flourish. So can you help me with that? What's up? How many you want? One? One Paku. I need to go catch a Paku. Let's see if I can get the phone up and maybe we'll, we'll do this as a live Paku catch. I've got a whole bunch of GoPros None of which I have functioning yet, but I'm gonna. Let's see now. We need to go to Google. 
Let me get a YouTube right there. Your channel. Dirty Aquarium. All right. I should be able to find my link. Here it is. Open the Chrome. Always. I got a new phone. See my new phone? It's a 5G. I want you to know. Accept and continue. Yes, I'm in. Entering, loading. I'm going to need to turn the volume. Well, maybe I won't turn it down. Allow mic cam access. Camera and microphones. Pictures and record. Welcome to record. We are there. Enter. And I need to get back over the stream yard. Enter. Father Fish. Backstage. There we are. Okay, we're going to uh, go out here and try to catch a Paku. Well, guess what I got today? I'm so glad we did this. I wanted to show these to you. Look at the size of them. They're hiking sharks. They're, they're, the biggest one is almost a foot. The others are six to eight or nine inches. I've got four of them. And I'm thinking about sending them up to the uh, zoo up in Maryland because they're really good cold water fish. They do great in ponds. And they get four to five feet long. All right. We're going to catch a paku. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, here are the pot two. I need to help. Let's get a bucket. You know what? Which one do you want? I don't know if I can put the big one in here. He's kind of too big. If you want the big one, yeah, well, if you want the big one, how long for you get home? Oh, you're close. Okay. Well, I'll put oxygen on it. They're an air breather anyway, I think. Uh, let's get some water. What we need to carry these is a, a cooler or some kind of a chest. Let's see what I got up here. Somebody came and took all of my big boxes and left me all the little ones just two days ago. <laughs> uh, let's try to catch them and see what we can do. Oh, here, I'll let you, I'll let you hold the camera. I can get them. Uh, sure. somebody? Oh. Yeah, we're live. We're live broadcast. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, let's carry it up and put some air on it. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Right. Videographer. What's your name? Mercedes. Mercedes. Thanks for the virtue. And there he is. I think he'll be fine. We'll put some oxygen on it. We're gonna, oh, we need a lid, though. Lid, lid. I'm short on lids. Grab that blue one right there. All right. Okay. Set it up here. Put the lid on. Okay. I think he'll be all right. If he, if he dies, I'll replace him. But I'm sure he'll be fine. All right. How do we do, guys? 4280. 41, 2, 3. I'll be here tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bet. Here. You need a sticker. We'll send the bird, okay? Right. Yes, it's in my computer for Vansa. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> They're stickers. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Yes, the bird. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Well, I'm back. That was interesting. Phew. Did that work all right? How did that work? Red eye crystals. Bunch of paints, hello. Talking about societies, clubs, and the like. Bikers and Pythons. A shout out to Bikers and Pythons. Thank you so much for the video you did yesterday uh, of Father Fish. That was Pretty neat and pretty cool. Did not know you were doing that when you're here. Make sure in the future, if you go to some place that's not a personal friend, that you ask permission. But it was very well done. And I was most impressed with your, with your knowledge of the fish and your ability to identify everything you saw. That was pretty impressive. I doubt my glasses are fogged up. So good job. Bikers and Pythons is new in the fish fam. It's a young man. He and his father have been active in my shop for several years. Uh, they're good hobbyists. Um, we've been trading breeding pairs of fish for a good while. And uh, it's just a delight having them in here and being able to support bikers and pythons. Let's see. Did anyone here make a comment about the capture I just did? Well, Chewy said they get big. Uh, Hmm, all right. 
All right, somebody was asking me, let's go back to the, hello, let's go back to the uh, comment about keeping plants in a 10 gallon tank using, um, oh, here it is, Rick tablets. All right, you, if you really wanna grow plants in a tent, uh, give up on Amazon swords because they get too big. You can do little ones and get them started. If you're not doing a deep sand bed, you're just doing like gravel with root taps, you're never gonna grow plants. It just won't work. Gravel has to be six inches deep in order to begin to be able to work. Sand only needs to be two to three inches, two inches plus an inch of dirt or three inches of sand. So you can do it in a 10. I've got lots of 10s that are growing plants. Um, light's never the issue, never. If, if you think it is, just leave it on longer. I had some tanks with lights that have been on permanently for years. Uh, they're, low, uh, they're, they're low power lights. The plants adapt to them nicely uh, and it's never an issue. The lights are, you, you can use any kind of light. Doesn't matter what the light is. And it's not hard to grow plants in a tent. You just have to have it set up right. Root tablets. You're probably burning them up. Too much fertilizer will burn up plants. And you don't want the plants right where the root tablets are anyway. You want the, the you want the, the the roots in the sand and let them search for nutrition. That'll get them growing and thriving. So when you when you set up your tank with an inch of dirt and two inches of sand, put the plant's roots one inch down into the sand and let them discover the uh, the rest of let them discover the 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 dirt at the bottom. I'm I'm distracted because I'm sitting here looking at a baby sulcata. Let me turn this around. Oh, so you can see it. If I can do this. There he is. Now we scared him. He's been walking along and now he's scared. He's just going to sit there and not move the whole time. Oh, well. Camera shy. Now I know if I had my phone still online, we could have done, done that, but I didn't. All right, so we did that. Zimrian. Well, yeah, the benefit of a smaller channel is that everybody gets to have an input. Um, you know, anything over 100, and it gets a bit problematic trying to keep up with it. And frankly, with about 50 people here, I can't keep up with it now. I don't even try. The only way I could is if I did not have my own agenda but rather my agenda was simply the, the, uh, the, the comment section, then I could keep up. Red crystals growing inside an Oscar's eye. No, I can't say as I've heard of it. I need to see a picture of that. Red crystals growing in his eyes. No idea in this world what you're referring to. I mean, it's possible I've seen it and know what it is, but not by that description. Italian and Russian streams are interesting, as well as the Philippines. You know what I was thinking about, Chewy? Was uh, starting to do some some translated videos I've got a lot of people 
in the Philippines and Indonesia that are watching my videos. And I've also got a lot of people in, in Germany and the Scandinavian countries. I was thinking about maybe uh, translating into Filipino and German. I don't know. I don't speak either, so it would be uh, an extra effort to interpret what they were saying. I don't know. I don't have any experience with it, or not much. Daddy Ken has an Oscar with red crystals. Take a picture. Send me a picture, Danny Ken. Country laws involving native species. In Florida, there are very, very few. There's, to my knowledge, there's only one native species that is restricted, and that's a northern Florida darter. Can't remember the name of it. It's a beautiful little fish, but it is protected um, as uh, endangered. Hi there. Can I help you? Yeah, I didn't want to. It's okay. I'm just I'm getting some angel fish. Okay. All right. Sorry. I'm on a live broadcast. Oh, are you? Yeah. All right, I'll come back. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back here. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, let's get back online. And um Take the, take the camera back. Hmm. Can't get back to it. My chat, top chat is not going back far enough. Well, what I'm going to have to do is... Um, Hi, Sand Creek. Okay, we're coming back. Enter. And here we are. We're going, we're going, to, to, uh, we're going to go catch some angels. Okay. Let's see what he wants. I do how are you? Hi. Good. You looking for anything? Okay. I'll just look. All right. Let me get a bag and a net. A net. Okay, catch some angels here. Thank you. Okay. Tell me what you're thinking about. I'll just a centerpiece angel Well, I probably have some. Here's a nice one right there. What do you think? Uh, like a more. Yeah, my, she wants it, Yeah, she wants a pretty one, my girlfriend. There's a gold one back there. Here's some red. Yeah, those are cool looking. That one looks really nice. Yeah, 
Should be fine. If he dies, bring him back. Okay, we'll replace it. Yeah, no problem. No, it's okay. Bag him up. I think he'll be okay. Scared me. Trying to do things. Trying to do three-handed things with two hands. Sorry. Scared him a little bit. I don't know what in the world we managed to do there. Let's get rid of it all. Whoosh. I think I'm out. No, no. If I had some technical skills, I could do this. All right, let's just kick from studio. Kick ass. There. That's all of that. Oof. Madness. Oh, well. It's too distracting. Live video, love teach, right? Very good. Zimrian. Ten gallon tanks with a few LEDs. Well, you can certainly increase the light or simply leave the light on personally. They're all low, there are low light plants that you probably can, can grow in there, like java fern. Um, or put a light bulb over it. Oh, Caleb was asking if that's true, sorry. Oh, somebody's talking about Ruby's rescue. Good job, Ruby. Are you guys familiar 
with Dustin's Dustin's fish tanks. He's located in Kentucky. I've been buying plants from him for a couple of months now. He's got a really nice selection of rare and exotic plants. He's also got 150,000 YouTube followers, but he's been around for a long time, 12 years or more. The great benefit of belonging to a fish club is the, the, the opportunity it provides to be able to be around and have conversations with other people who are doing what you're doing. It is the very best learning experience. Although I think frankly, YouTube is a close second. Um, Joey was saying they get big. Yeah, yeah, Paco, they get about 40 pounds. Dragon Lair saying he kept and bred Oscars and never saw that. Yeah, I'm not sure I know what you're referring to. I mean, it could be genetic. I just, I don't know. Is it like actual crystals? I mean, what does it look like? Looks like crystal, red crystals in the eye. I know. Need a picture. Yes, bikers and pythons. I just did that. I hope it met your approval. Shout out to bikers and pythons. I like bikers when they get old. They really don't lose their pattern. They keep their pattern. Um, and they only get maybe 18 to 20 inches. I've never, they probably get bigger than that, but I haven't seen them bigger than that in fish tanks. Um, and they will spawn for you. They're pretty easy spawners. So you can actually raise them. Eddie Ken's on the board of directors of the Portland Aquarium Society. We'll have at the Valley Aquarium Society, as well as the Salem. Uh, Danny Ken's talking about the groups. First one I ever belonged to was Potomac Valley when I lived in Maryland. And then we started a club in Baltimore right around the time the National Aquarium opened. I got a bunch of pakus. And then, of course, we started the uh, Venice Aquarium Society here in Venice. There are two other clubs, actually more than two. There's the Tampa Aquarium Society, which is a world-class club. Um, the Suncoast Aquarium Society in Sarasota, which is kind of dwindling in membership, used to be a very, a very strong club 25 years ago. Hi, Tommy. Tommy Denda just came in. Red eye crystal in the eye. Boy, I tell you, it sounds genetic to me. What old camera?
Alice K8. It's brand new. I just got it two days ago. It's the newest camera online. There is no newer camera. Alice, were you talking about Mike? Uh, yeah, the Catfish Convention is sponsored by Potomac Valley. That's right. Great, great club. I belonged to it back in the 60s, like 68, 69, 50 years ago. I think the problem with the setting is that I kept pushing buttons somehow, and it got all screwed up. Hi, Christopher. What do I think about CO2 use? The nature creator is asking, Christopher. Well, I'm not against CO2 use. It has its place. I think it's most effective in helping bedding plants to uh, uh, that are planted immersed to grow. Um, it 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 punches it punches deeper and provides nutrition deeper for low growing plants. Seems to be a major benefit. Um, on the it it um, in a heavily planted tank. Um, where the plants have kind of taken over the substrate. It's beneficial to keep the plants going. On the negative side, it tends to create uh, a leggy kind of growth that through continual pruning results in plants that are no longer very attractive. Uh, typically, CO2 is used to kickstart show tanks, and as such is enormously effective. Rarely are those plants kept for more than a year or so. Saraj Patil, should I try to cap the sand with more sand? Always a good idea. Always a good idea. Um, if you have any kind of leakage, from the substrate, if you've got mold buildup, if the water is becoming tannin, add another inch of sand. Ooh. Yeah, I think the problem was Wi Fi. I agree. Uh, business is actually been up at least 25%, maybe better. It's been pretty impressive. I've been open now for three weeks. Started in the middle of the shutdown. Fortunately, I live in Florida where they don't send the police around to lock you up for being in business. Um, Florida's been great. They've proven the case, as far as I'm concerned. I opened up three weeks ago. I decided I'm not sick. I'm not going to be afraid of being sick. I'm not going to act like I'm sick. I will take appropriate precautions, like not hugging pretty girls not sniffing hair. Um, I've stopped kissing, well, along with other, other things that are more a function of uh, bodily ineptitude than principle. Um, I'm keeping a relative distance. I mean, there are times in a shop where you're right next to people. I just try to move it along. I'm not feeling uh, I'm not feeling weak, run down, sick, bothered, stressed, bothered, bewildered, none of that. I have I have these mild symptoms of everything imaginable, which I choose to ignore unless it gets a little worse. It never seems to get a little worse. 
sometimes even gets a little better. So yeah, I'm satisfied so far. Here's the thing, I'm 80 years old. I've got all kinds of conditions and issues. If I get sick, it's on me. I'm the one who chose to get sick. I'm the one who chose to be out there and expose myself. I'd rather live that way than not. I mean, being afraid to talk to people or to stand within three feet of people or to be out moving around and doing things, I just, I choose not to live that way. And if I were in a state that required that behavior, I would move. I wouldn't stay there because I would not be able to tolerate it. I got home from the hospital mid-March, right at the beginning of the first 15-day lockdown. And I spent the next two weeks sleeping off my hospital stay. At the end of that, I was done. I was ready to get out and go. I started coming in the shop. I came in every day for a week with the door locked. I then decided to unlock the door because there were people banging on it every day. And it's been a good decision. My income is up. I'm not eligible for any of the PP or the other grants because I run this all by myself. So I can't get money to preserve payroll because I don't have a payroll. So I'm on my own. And I've been able to keep it going. I've actually, for the first time in the 15 years I've been doing this, I've got savings, mainly because I'm a couple of months behind on my rent. But my landlord has agreed that I can make partial payments. So I'm doing that and it's working out just fine. Thank you very much. So that's my story. We started out on CO2. So there is the depth of each layer. The dirt layer needs to be at least an inch. The sand layer, it needs to at least two inches. Three inches is optimal. Chad, are you talking to me? Do I have a shop? Now, this is my home, actually. Well, it was my home until the city threw me out and said I couldn't live here anymore because it was a fish room and not a bedroom. So now I live five minutes away. But I have no fish in my bedroom. As some of you who have seen a recent live cast with... Oh... Brain's gone. Yeah, Chewie's talking about I don't need help to help him. Alice says. And Alice says, never mind. Okay. So, Rich, thanks you all. Me too. Do you have a shop? Yes, I have a shop. Absolutely. Help to help me. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Stop fighting, you guys. You don't get to fight on my live stream. What? Timothy loves my channel. Me too, Timothy. Saraj Patil, half inch, no, halfway inch, half inch, no, uh, halfway inch, that's good. One inch or two inches of sand. How much organic soil, right, one inch. Even a half an inch, sort of doesn't matter. Frank, I'm an inspiration, I'm an old man. Old man or inspirational, 
just by breathing. Keep on breathing. Ladies, <laughs> man, da 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 da. Well, it's kind of cloudy today. We've had rain on and off today. You know, window on my side, a window on my window on my right. Oh. You are the nature center says you're a wise man. Check out my YouTube channel, The Nature Creator. I absolutely will. White balance. Yeah, that's you know what? I've got a light and a really I really need to use that. What time is it? If, yeah, let me fiddle around with this a minute. See if it makes a difference. I think it will. <clears throat> Won't take a minute. I bought some lights, and some of them are still in the bag. All right. Let's see. Need to be able to hang this somehow. Let's see if that works. It probably blinds me. Oh, yes, it's going to blind me. Huh. Well, the light, the light's coming from over here. That ain't doing much. I don't know. Is that better? It's <laughs> it's a terrible glare. Let's try moving it. <sighs> Here we do. I don't know. That's better, isn't it? There's some light on my on my left side here. Anyway, nature create tour. It should be. Creator. All right, streetwise, two inches total, no. Three inches total. Two sand, one dirt. Two sand, one dirt. Siraj has it. Oh, uh, well, so are we finished fighting about the light? Thoughts on the order and timing of the different kinds of fish introduced and why to ensure the time setting up plant life isn't for naught. Same million. Wow. I'm going to be intuitive about this one. Okay, so here's the deal. When you set up your tank, put plants in it. Day two. Day three, put a few fish in. Day four, put more plants in. Day five, put a few more fish in. And go like that until you reach a level where you're sure you can't do it anymore, and then stop. And it won't be for naught. <laughs> do I have any missionary trips? No, but you know what? I've got a lot of videos that are sitting in a box somewhere. I should dig them out and try to load them. So some of them are pretty interesting. 
I will look into that. I need to shut this shop down so I have time to play on my YouTube. That's the problem. DM Productions. Well, it's crazy lightning is on. Oh. DMC Productions. Establish a tank more for plants at the start. Some aquariums that have fish that don't like plants are the exception. Yeah, I think. We have a phone call. Well, my brand new Samsung 10. Samsung 10. Father Fish. Father Fish, are you busy? Well, I'm talking to about 50 friends. 50 you're, friends? Yeah, you're now part of the conversation. Oh, great. Oh, sorry. Who's calling? Well, um... It's Suzanne, and I used to live in Venice and got fish from you, and, and now I'm in Utah, and you you sold me a couple of these uh, rainbow carbenzas. Okay. And they became my favorite fish oh. tank, and everything was like built around them, caves and all that, and the colors, they would flash their colors and everything. And so, you know, I, I moved to Utah almost two years ago. But only one year ago did these two mate. Huh. They had babe. They had babies. Wonderful. And I was so excited because here's my favorite fish. After all these years, nobody, you know, there's no babies. And she was so good with them. I didn't know what to do, so I took him out, put him in with the snails. And then he was kind of stressing, and she was kind of stressing because everybody, she was chasing everybody off the tank you know, protecting the babies and whatnot. They were like little ducks. They followed her around. And so I ended up separating the fry from the mom. Right. And put, the, put the dad back in with the big tank. So mom and dad were back in the big tank, back at home. And I took the little ones and put them in a different tank and kind of raised them up. So I got about 30 of them, I guess. And then out of all that, there were nine that survived. And I ended up with two, well, two girls and seven boys. Huh. And... <laughs> and they were so it was the neatest experience ever I just wanted to tell you this oh, that that's was, delightful for, for me those two fish that you suggested you know I loved it my daughter said oh, don't get any more breeding cares mom <laughs> uh. you know I did have trouble getting rid of the babies I ended up swapping them for some sand <laughs> nice but I told him I said don't let these guys breed you know we're going to try and preserve this this um Breed or species. The strain, whatever. right. Yeah. Anyways, I would I don't know if I should get another male for her or not. She's the male dad, died. Yes, the male died. Oh. That's that's the other thing. I've been all this way and then he got Popeye. So you was, did not keep any of the juvenile males? No, I had just given them away because I didn't want them to interbreed. Well it can't hurt them. You can do that. Try to get one of them back, at least long enough to breed them. You put them in a shop? No, it was an individual. Send me a pit. Oh, okay. Well, you can't track them down. Send me a picture. Send me a picture of the female, and I'll see if I can match it up. If I can, I'll send you a mail. She's so pretty. Ah. And now she's she's like the queen of I got him in a ten gallon tank because I'm recycling the twenty nine gallon for everybody. So, you know, on top of all this pandemic and all this separation of fish and, and then him dying, which was it took him a week to die. Oh, no. the worst thing ever. Oh, no. I mean, there were times when he just was like really dark black striped. Yeah. And it was like the grim reaper had just taken him or something. Oh so, dear. And then he just kept hanging on and hanging on. I was I treated him for every, with everything that we had, which was yeah. like everything that you possibly could. 
and I think I got a few worms down him, you know, because he was gulping air. And, you know, so I think that he did eat something. Uh, it's the saddest thing to watch ever. Oh, I know, I know. And I did, I did separate him. I put him in the top of the tank in one of those breeder net things. Because I didn't know what to come wake up in one morning and have him all eaten by the quarries that are in here. Yeah. His wife, you know, his wife. Uh, listen, I've got a um, a Facebook page, Father Fish. You could yeah. message me there, send okay. a picture, and let me see what I can put together. Meanwhile, your conversation has been immortalized. Have you found me on YouTube? Yeah, I was seeing a few YouTube videos. I haven't had a chance to look at anything because I was looking for your phone number today. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, you're 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 live on my YouTube Sunday afternoon stream. Oh my gosh, this rant? Yes. And you're well, getting you're getting delightful feedback. I just love those fish. It's like you took my personality and you matched me with those fish. And uh, it was like it was so sad when you died this week. It's like the worst thing ever. We've been, you know, across the country. <laughs> Well, we need and to get another one. Everything you told me to do, everybody made it except for the, the blue crawdad. Huh. She, she gave it up about three weeks after we got here, but all the other fish and snails, everybody made it. Nice. And she's like, I guess, probably one of my last Floridian fish. Yeah. Well, thank you for calling. That's really sweet. Thanks for being there. Yeah, and send me a picture and let's see what I can do. Okay. And if I can't do that, I'll come up with something else that you'll fall in love with. Well, the fact that they would change colors and, and you know, told their personalities and whatnot. Yeah, and yeah. Times, I thought they were going to kill each other. Before everybody had babies, I thought that I was going to, somebody was going to be dead. Because, uh, you know, he would kick her out and she would kick him out and then they just had this really aggressive. I was like, oh no. But that was why they would have babies. <laughs> All right, I'll post it. All right, sweetheart. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you again. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> well, that's a good spot to end on, isn't it? Uh, 354. We got a few more minutes. Toronto, hi there. Yes. Alice says you're going to start crying. She might have. And then Alice would have cried, and then everybody would have cried. Fish missionary work live, says DMC. You got that straight. Acting, uh, adding too many plants before adding fish results in bad water parameters for the eventually introduced fish. Therefore, it's best to add them proportionately to keep the water hospital. Million, we need to talk. I mean, we really do. Uh, I don't know what to say. I think in principle, it's true that plants and fish should be added to a tank proportionally. That's a good principle. I would not say that adding plants before fish results in bad water parameters. I don't believe that's true at all. Because the plants are not taking anything out of the water that the fish need, and they're putting things in the water that the fish need. So, an excess of plants is not detrimental to healthy fish. 
it's really quite the reverse. Nevertheless, I do like the idea of proportionality. That makes good sense. It's uh, a principle that is worth trying to achieve. And I think you ought to do it. Boy, half of my face looks wiped out. That window really does a job on washing out the light, doesn't it? Okay, there's that. How much do you sell the fish for? And do you get Ram Blue Ram? The fish. I sell the fish for uh, whatever they're worth. I try to keep my prices down. And I almost always have Blue Rams. It's one of my all-time favorites. I sell the Blue Rams for roughly $25 for a breeding pair. And Toronto, does anyone know much about harvesting wild sumac? Not since I was your age, Toronto. Thunder! Such a joy to watch. Thank you for so much for all the wisdom and experience. Thank you, Thunder. Thank you so much. How are we getting along here? Chewy, welcome to my nightmare. Never know what he's referring to. Anthony says, got that right, Chewy. So this goes back a bit. Hospitable was the word, not hospital, says million. See million. Uh, I catch tiny fish. Can I just use a deep sand bed without dirt? Absolutely yes. It'll take about six months for it to build up enough of a substrate um, enriched la layer to actually be able to nurture plants. Chewy, we're ending on a metal note here with black widows. Tons of cribbies on Google. Yeah, I'm not at all sure. She called it a rainbow crivy. Don't know. It could be a rock crivy. I just don't know. Uh, that's why I asked her to send me a picture. So we'll see. A pick of a credenza. That's like a bureau or a chiffero. Or like, or a side table, or something like that. There. Toronto got your heart touched, did you? Yeah, me too. Well, that was sweet. Okay, nice to be with you guys. Let's see, Andy Dean just picked up a thirty-one inch deep. 70 gallon, 36 by 15, will be dirted number five. I was thinking giant valve and a mother sword. Good choice. I should be getting some, uh, some more of that giant corkscrew valve. That is an incredible plant. I got a bunch of them in like three feet. Within weeks, they're six foot long. Honest to God, I was holding one the root up to, up to my top of my head, and it was touching the floor. Amazing plants. Doobie-doo, where are we? I'm going backwards. Okay, I think I got it all covered. Much as I'm about to. I did disclose several times. Hotlines are open, yeah, true. 
Uh, it depends on the state, Alice. In some states, only one party need be privy to the conversation. In other states, both parties must be, like California, Maryland, for example. In Florida, neither party needs to be privy. It's considered public. Do I recommend dirted tanks for oxalotls? I've been asked this before. And um, yeah, I do. I think it's helpful just to have a balanced tank. Indoor Fishing just made a $5 contribution. Thank you so much, Indoor Fishing. Deeply appreciate. He says, I think I found a leech in a tub outside. Will fish eat leeches? I have community fish and pygmy sunfish. Thank you, or should I toss it out? Well, I would toss it out. You can cut it, but then it'll make two. Um, it, a big fish will eat it. Little fish, of course, can't. And pygmy sunfish. What kind of pygmy sunfish? And you must be in Florida, or are you not? Indoor fishing outside. So indoor fishing inside. Um, yeah, complicated answer. Not real helpful, I guess. I don't risk feeding live leeches to fish because they suck the blood out of fish. That's in their nature. The best seven or six out of keep blue rams. I keep them uh, alkaline. I keep them like seven, five. I don't keep anything at six out unless it won't survive higher. Some things won't. Fancy is Tom. We did that. That was cool. The axolotls. Yeah, haps can be aggressive. Rose here, hi row. Big J's here. Does a deeper soil layer do more? The deeper, the better. Yeah, probably. The, the critical thing is to cap it. What's most important is to separate the soil from the water column. You don't want the two to come in contact with each other because then you wind up with dirty water, with water that's so full of tannins and, and uh, mold that you can't really keep it clean. I mean, it's not unhealthy. It's just um, unsightly. But there are some people who prefer to keep fish that way. And uh, we were talking about in, indoor fish indoors, whatever, indoor fishing inside. The, uh, the, the outdoor ponds are for things like pygmy, pygmy sunfish are best kept in dirted uh, containers without sand so that they can kind of burrow down into it. In fact, I've been collecting um, oak leaf mulch lately as a, uh, as a cover for my sand in my black water tank in order to provide a thick enough mulch layer for baby fish to thrive in. Going back, serious question, DMC. Non-predatory leeches in the goldfish pond. Are they really non-predatory? Never attach fish, no signs of all the wounds. Yeah, they are really not predatory. Um, they feed on more microscopic stuff. I still don't like them. They come in with um, black worms all the time, but they're rarely alive. Don't know why that is. Chattanooga adds here. 
Hello, hello. If only life was like a black widow, life would be so much better. Sounds like Alice. Must be Alice. Oh, it's Alice. Go, oh, Alice. Redbeard, Jetty, Chewy, much better than a psycho circus. That could be a big J fish cream. Chat. Okay, I guess we've done everything. <laughs> enough. We've done enough, haven't we? Let's say goodbye. What time is it? Time to say goodbye. 407. Am I right in thinking I have to remove all of my fish? Oh, here we go. We just got we just got a um, a notification. An adjunct to create a nat natural aquarium. I hope I'm going to be able to get back to where I was. Lily Lily. Well, whatever it was, I've lost it. Huh. Where are we? There. Who just sent $10? Thunder Aquatics. Thank you, Thunder Aquatics. $10 super sticker. Thank you so much. We're running over. I need to run over more. I keep all my tanks for your instructions. Soil and capped at deeper depths. All doing so much better than I could ever imagine. Ain't it interesting? Ain't it just so? I was looking at uh, Dustin's fish tanks today, and he's all about dirt. I, I really need him to uh, shout me out a little bit. Thank you, Thunder Aquatics. Yeah, it's true. Let's see. Fanciest Tom. I appreciate your knowledge. I'm interested if you have advanced tips for axolotl keeping, since all the information out there is really for beginners. Well, I'll tell you what it's about. It's about stability. It's about, you think about where the axolotl lives, its native environment. It's in deep underground lakes. Those lakes do not change they stay the same temperature. The food that drops down into them is sparse at best. And these little buggers probably live a hundred years in that environment. Absolute stability is your goal. So a deep substrate is really critical to achieving stability such that you never need to do a water change. You feed maybe once a week. Temperature remains constant. Water remains constant. And the fish will live indefinitely, whether it's fish or axolotls. Stability is the key. Chubs. Going to be doing two 45 gallon outdoor tubs, one with sheep's head pupfish and the other with 45 gallon. Can I do golden top minnows and least killies together? No, you can't. The golden top minnow will eat the least killies. Uh, you need to separate them. 
golden top minnows are really quite predaceous and they get pretty good size. They can get five to six inches long and they're stunningly beautiful. I recommend you do that heavily planted and make sure that you've got screen around the side or on the top or something because they tend to want to jump. And you don't want to lose a big, beautiful five inch male to the air above. Um, yeah, keep them separate. Now I'm getting um, the sheep's head pupfish. They should do fine. You, you're going to have them in hard water, and that's kind of critical. They're a brackish water fish. So I, what I would do, since you're doing it outdoors, is take some water from where you're collecting them and use that water. And don't worry about changing it. It's going to rain in that barrel. If it rains heavily, then bring some more of the... Uh, canal water or bay water in to, to add back to it. You want to keep the hardness up there pretty good. Don't let it get soft. And you should wind up with babies. Um, I really recommend that you do pup fish in a long, low tank so you can watch them. The show they put on is absolutely spectacular. There's nothing like it with any other fish. See if you can find some shallow tanks that are maybe two or three feet long and a foot, a foot plus, maybe 18 inches deep. Build something if you can. Uh, that's easy enough to build and it's not going to fall apart or leak. You will be amazed. Put some plants in, but not many. Dirt it. Put sand on it. Keep it pretty open. Don't try to glom it up with a lot of plants or anything else. Keep it pretty bare. Uh, you can have some individual plants growing in it, like val or that sort of thing. Um, do it. They're spectacular fish. Do I ship fish, Andre saying? Yes, I do. I'm not. Well, I don't have anything listed right now. I will try to do that. But I do ship any fish that are here. I've been thinking about just doing a weekly video of all the fish in the shop and then making them available for shipping that week. I could do that. Indoor Fishing Inside says, the leech I found on my channel. Don't know what that means, but I hope there ain't no leeches on my channel. Roe found dragonfly larvae in her tubs. Yeah, that's a real problem because they eat baby fish. Uh, you need to screen your tubs. Puts any kind of screen top. The dragonflies will dip down and their tail, every time their tail touches the water, they lay an egg. And they'll do it on any body of water. So it's a good idea to cover your outdoor pools with some kind of screen, if only to keep those suckers out. You can make it big enough for mosquitoes to get through because the fish love to eat mosquito larvae. They just don't so much eat dragonfly larvae. Rather, they get ate by them, eaten by them. Is a 10 gallon good to keep the blue ram in? Yeah, you want to keep the temperature up. You want minimum 82 degrees. Don't know what that is in centigrade, but 82 degrees Fahrenheit. You could do 80, not less. Didn't add river sand because under the light it looks kind of dirty. That won't hurt a thing. 
go ahead and use the river stand. If you want to rinse it, rinse it, but it's perfect. My uh, Rohan, Jay, my planted tank is not deep enough. It's two inches of white sand and plants have kind of stalled tiny fish in there. What do you have under the sand, Rohan? Is it just sand or do you have some dirt under it? If you don't, then they're going to stall until there's enough waste to build up in there to provide nutrition for the plants to grow. Uh, put some more fish in and feed a little more heavily. I don't like leeches. That's my answer. Oh, you're in Okafenoki. Wow, cool. So you're getting, uh, that's interesting. So you must be on the southern end of Okafunoki down in the Everglades. Do the uh, do they come up into the north end of the lake? I may do a strain, a saying, yeah, next time I go back. Well, it looks like I've, I've gone back and picked up, let's see if there's Anything new? We're running way over here. Rose, want me to be on all day? I would love it if we could start getting a few more like um, donations to the cause. Did it bring that turtle home, Cody? Oh, my Dirty Tank playlist, yeah. There's a lot of, I got a, probably 20 videos on Dirty Tanks. Yeah, it is going long fishing carts. We need to give it up here. Okay, you know, I think that's a good idea. I think maybe what I'll do, I'm getting fish on Thursdays. So maybe what I'll do is make a, rather than an unboxing, do a Friday video of all of the fish that are new and on sale, post that, and then make them available for purchase. I have to figure out how to do this. Um, I can post my telephone if we can do it by phone. Fancy as Tom is saying, does Father Fish have a how to set up a dirted tank video? Well, Fancy as Tom, you need to go to Father Fish's channel and just see how many videos he has about setting up dirted tanks. There probably are 40. All right, we're going to run now. Rashardi. Cichlid just shipping Brichardi. Very cool fish. Very cool. Okay. Let me go to the bottom. Good. What was that? I just saw somebody I never saw before. Scrolling too fast to catch it. It was good aquatics. Think about the bottom. Fancy as Tom, do I prefer stable temperatures if we're always fighting for the perfect one? Yeah, stable temperatures are perfect, so long as it's warm enough. By Ruby Rescue, Soul Conquest, 26 plants and 32 fish using two NAD, a half inch of soil, an inch of gravel, and sand substrate for my quarries. Okay, then. Sounds good, I guess. How many hours of light per day for a new dirted tank? 
at uh, 10 to 12, will I make a book? Probably not. That's why I'm doing the videos. What I do is get it in a more organized format. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm repeating myself here. Thank you for the stream, Father Fish says, Ro. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Lefty. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it being here. We had a lot of fun. See you on Wednesday. We're probably going to be getting in the field. I want to try to get up into the um, uh, central Florida area around uh, um, so sulfur, sulfur Springs, whatever, Crystal River, around Crystal River. Take care, God bless. Counting down, 10, 9, Rohan's Growing High Grow, 8, I love it, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Bye, everybody. Taking care of the beer. Love you all.